So uh, welcome to the first episode of uh, Talent Hub TV. We're here with Mark Tossel, um, and uh, we're going to talk about his story into Salesforce and what he's been doing over the last kind of year and a half, um, and, and get some insight into how he got into the market and how it's evolved from there. Um, so uh, could you give us a quick overview of, uh, of your background prior to Salesforce, um, and uh, I guess the last kind of uh, year and a half or so, how, what's got you to this point right now? Yeah, so after high school I went to uni, studied mechanical engineering, and uh, then I graduated and worked for Procter & Gamble okay. as a project engineer. So I did that for two years, but it really wasn't my thing. Um, so I ended up making a pretty drastic move, went to America, studied uh, to be a minister, a pastor, and uh, so I was a pastor in a Baptist church for the last uh, 25 years. Okay. Um, but through that time, I had health struggles with depression and uh, was untreated and it got really bad. So I essentially had a, a breakdown, had a four month um, kind of a medical furlough, long service leave. And then after that, my doctor advised me to get a new career, which was incredibly scary when you've done the same thing for 25 years. Yeah, of course. So uh, I had no idea what to do. I had an engineering degree. No relevant experience though, so I didn't feel like I could go back into engineering. And honestly, I hadn't enjoyed engineering, so I really didn't want to go back into that. I uh, was getting very desperate for work and uh, even applied for a low-paying factory job and got denied that, so I was really discouraged. And uh, then a friend of mine was reviewing my resume, just trying to help me out look, looking for work, and he owns a, a wealth management business in Bella Vista. Yep. And... Uh, he noticed that I have an engineering degree and also I did have a little bit of database experience from a really long time ago, like six months with Microsoft Access. <laughs> um, and uh, he, they had thought of implementing Salesforce. Sure. And uh, they had the idea that maybe I could do that. And um, it was funny though, because when they asked me if I would consider doing that and taking on that role, uh, I literally had to Google CRM and Salesforce, because I'd never heard of them, obviously I'd never seen them, yeah. and then um, agreed to take the role in a fit of madness, and I uh, had three weeks to prepare. So I spent three weeks learning, which I'll explain in a minute, and uh, then began the role in June of last year. Okay. So that was my first role, which was CRM implementation project manager, yeah. and then the role of um, business analyst uh, until recently. So you, I guess you'd never, you, you didn't know what Salesforce was, right? So unless your friend was reviewing your CV, it would never have been a career you'd have, you'd no. have thought of. Um, no, not at all. So pretty crazy stuff that you're now where you are based on the fact that someone was helping you out reviewing your CV. And it was, a, they offered me, a. what's funny is, just to show you how ignorant we both were of the complexity of the project, they offered me a three month project as if anyone could teach themselves Salesforce yeah. and implement Financial Services Cloud, which is really complex, yeah. in three months. So sure. it just shows you that we really did not know what we were getting into. Yeah, sure. So your engineering degree and background um, and, and the, the small amount of database experience you did have, how, how useful was that in the early days of, of getting your head around um, Salesforce? I, I don't know that the engineering degree was helpful at all, except that I think in order to graduate with an engineering degree, you do have to have a, a pretty analytical, logical mind. Yeah. So that, that was obviously a help. The brief experience I had a long time ago, and we're talking, I think about 20 years ago, um, with Access, sure. was a bit helpful because at least I understood what a database was and how it worked. Yeah, sure. But this project is 10,000 times more complicated than that was. Yeah, so yeah. So three weeks to learn Salesforce or get your head around what it was and yeah. uh, how, how do you do that? How do you approach going from not knowing what CRM or Salesforce <laughs> is to then starting a project to implement Salesforce for a, a client? Well, literally, I remember Googling um, Salesforce online learning. Okay. Because that, that's all I could do. Yeah. I didn't know anyone in Salesforce. I had no contacts. I obviously had no mentor. I'd never heard of Trailhead or anything. So I ended up on YouTube and I found Dreamforce videos from 2013. Okay. So I spent a good while in those, probably the better part of a week full yeah. time, uh, just getting an idea of what Salesforce was, how it worked, the, ba the real basics. And then um, thankfully I stumbled across Trailhead and when I found that there was a structured online learning curriculum yeah. and it was free, Incredible, I was ecstatic. Eh? Yeah, 
How and, long had uh, Trailhead been going then at that point? Because obviously, not it's very huge long. Now. Yeah, I don't think Trailhead had been going a real, real long time at that point. Because I know I've spoken to people that learned Salesforce, I think three years ago, and I don't believe that they had Trailhead. So I, I don't, I don't know how they did it. But anyway, sure. <laughs> that's off to them. So Trailhead now it's such a big tool. There's so many different trails. There's so many different modules. Um, I, I'm guessing it was was quite uh, pulled back from from that when you started looking, but. How did you learn? How did how do you approach learning Salesforce and, and with Trailhead and, and getting your head across what you needed to know? Well, I started with the the basic trails, so basic admin. But pretty much what happened then was I have learned as I've done. Sure. So pretty much I'd go into work really. I start really early. I figured that my boss is paying me, but he's only getting half my time as far as productivity goes. Yeah. So I worked very long hours. Began at six generally. Opened up the office. Got there. Um, and really spend the first part of my day trying to take the business requirements and then figure out how to reflect that in Salesforce. Once I knew what I needed to do, then I needed to know how to do it. That's when I got into Trailhead. That's when I got into the community. Yeah. Uh, and another aspect of this that is really funny is that I was also hired in a financial services business. And prior to working in it, I had absolutely no understanding of that industry whatsoever either. So I not only had to learn Salesforce. Sure. I had to learn what's an SMSF, yeah. um, investments, compliance. It's a huge learning curve. And I must say, the first three months were incredibly terrifying. How did you, um, or not why, but how did you um, keep motivated? Because it's, um, it's scary, right? Like you said, it's, uh, it's something you don't know that you're trying to get your head across. And um, I'm guessing there are times where it was like, what am I doing? How, how do I even do this? Or yeah. you know, how do I learn all of this stuff in such a short period of time? So how do you keep with that and keep going through the trials and, and, and learning as you go? For me, I guess I love a challenge. I love learning. I've always loved learning. And uh, you know, I have a wife and a son. And we had got in a real financial mess through everything that had happened with my health. And so I was very motivated just to look after my family. And sure. I, I saw potential in this as a career path. Yeah. Uh, I love the tech. As soon as I started using Salesforce, I thought this is the coolest system ever. So that, that helped me be motivated. But also I began to make friends in the community sure. through Twitter, through the, um, the Trailblazer community, which yeah. used to be called the success community. Sure. And I began to get encouraged through them. And I think all those factors together as well as just you know, I'm, I'm blessed with great friends and they would encourage me. My boss, you know, would encourage me, felt that I could do this. But yeah. then, look, there were many times I came really close to just saying, it's too hard, you hired the wrong guy, go get a consultant and I'll go do something else. But I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, I bet. Now looking back. Uh, yeah, it was terrifying. It really was. And very stressful. Sure. So aside from Trailhead, which we all know is a great tool, um, and you've mentioned people in the community, but what, what else out there is there? Um, or sorry, is there out there for, for people that you know want to go on a similar journey? And what should they be looking at aside from Trailhead? Because there, there must be more out there that can help people on that journey. One thing I've noticed is there are people out there that they're even certified and they've done Trailhead and they have quite a few qualifications, even an IT degree, yeah. but they haven't had hands-on experience. Sure, They haven't built anything. They haven't sat down with a team, learned a business process, mapped the process, looked at the system, figured out how to reflect the process in the system, and then customize the system to match and reflect that. Sure. And really, honestly, you know, aside from, from Trailhead and, and the blogs that I've um, used, really just getting into it, getting into it, getting your hands dirty, mm -hmm. having a go, failing, trying. Uh, in, in, if you're not in a real business environment, Perhaps even volunteer for a non-profit or something of that nature. I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. But just to get into it and have a go. Yeah, because the certifications are right, theory based, and, and then once you start well, once you start doing it, you it really becomes kind of second nature, and, and that's where you really launch on, I guess. I also think that that one of the greatest attributes to have in this kind of role is not purely technical skill or aptitude or talent or intellect. Mm -hmm. You've got to have some measure of that, I guess, but just the 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 attitude to solve a problem yeah. and a bit of a bit of healthy stubbornness sure. that this is an issue and not to say well it can't be done because I've had times where even a development team at Salesforce had told me you can't do that but I knew we had to do it and I figured out a way so if you have that attitude I think you'll get there okay so um, so we we now know how you learn um, and um, and kind of why you learn and what the challenge was but 
what over the last uh, you know, year and a half has been the biggest achievement? Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd have to say just the, the, the central role of the first nine to 12 months, which was learning Salesforce and implementing Financial Services Cloud. Our business is very complex, so we're not just an insurance wealth management business or SMSF or super investment. We also have accounting, we have uh, legal um, partners, we embrace really every aspect of uh, wealth management, including property and lending. Sure. And that's great, but when you look at how that has to be reflected in the system, it does get really complex. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really pleased that with the help of a great team, I was able to, to build that. Now we're still building, we're still improving. Yeah. We really want to focus a lot more on client services and, and customer experience, and that's a big goal for us in the next 12 months to continue to perfect that. But just the core system itself, yeah, I'd say I'm most excited about that. Which, which is Financial Services Cloud as well, I believe. Right, so Financial Services Cloud, when we took it on in June of last year, I think there was only about 10 people in Australia that had it. Yeah. It was very new, it was very raw, um, incomplete, almost like a beta version, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is a lot of objects that I created and features of the system that Salesforce has since come out with. So it's like they're playing catch up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, you've designed the roadmap for... Uh... <laughs> okay, and uh, Einstein. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's obviously a, a passion of yours now. Yeah, I um, love that. Yeah. And tell, tell us a bit about that journey because, again, you know, that's gonna, uh, something that wasn't around um, or hadn't been done much when you picked up that piece. Um, so what's the story behind that and uh, how, how far have you come with the Einstein journey? So we've always, we, you know, we've always had a mindset of innovation and it's never been about purely having a CRM to manage marketing and sales. Our goal was always to transform the way we did business. So for example, we have 50 or 60 processes that we've mapped and we've built and automated in Salesforce and we run our business from those. Uh, so we've tried to really push the envelope of what the system can do. We got to a point in uh, early this year where we were starting to build some fairly complex reports and dashboards. And I was trying to do things from a business perspective based on a business need that I really struggled to be able to do in the native analytics capability. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to our solutions engineer, Andrew Foster, and I said, you know, what, what are your ideas on this? I need to build a report that does thus and so. I need a dashboard that does this. I don't seem to be able to do that. And he said, Mark, he said, have you checked out Wave? Because Einstein Analytics was called Wave at that point. Sure. And I said, look, I've heard of it. I think I may have done one trailhead badge, but I've never touched it. He said, you should have a look at it. And because we have a uh, analytics license included in our package because we're Financial Services Cloud, there was no extra cost. And I thought, well, I'll check it out. Now, I, I started to get into it and thought, well, this is fantastic. This will do exactly what we need to do from a business point of view. Uh, I got a quote from overseas, which was massive to implement it and build it. And I spoke to my, um, my business partner, our CEO, Neil, and I said, Neil, uh, you know, I think that they've massively overquoted. It's a huge amount of money. Why don't I try and self-implement? And you know, give it a month, see how it goes. If at the end of a month it's not working, either give it in or maybe get a consultant. I didn't realize at that time that there were so few people who know Einstein Analytics, mm -hmm. both the analytics, you know, the wave side of it, and also the artificial intelligence, Einstein discovery, predictability, and things of that nature. Sure. So that would have been in July. And so I taught myself Einstein Analytics. We didn't have access to the standard apps that you would normally have access to. So I actually built all of our apps from scratch for okay. our business. And now we pretty much run our business from those dashboards. And that, again, that learning journey was trailhead? It began with Trailhead, but then there have been some people in the community that have been super helpful, both through their blogs and also just through the, um, the community. So the Einstein Analytics group in the Trailblazer success community is fantastic. Uh, people like Andrew Price, um, Peter Lyons, Carl Brundage, Ricky Hovgaard uh, and others, the solutions engineers, um, Michael Lowe would be one of those. There's others out there that have been a big help. Uh, you know, Trailhead was great but there was really only so much that Trailhead could do. And I, I have no background of code whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I got to a point where, although I built everything pretty much that we needed with the point and click UI, which is fantastic by the way, that it, you can do that, sure. that. I realized that I do need to learn uh, JSON and SACL in order to uh, have the level of customizability that we're looking for and a little bit of added complexity. 
So as I've been getting to, as I've been learning that aspect of things, which has been new for me, that's where the community has been a great help. Okay, yeah, that's one of the, the best things about the whole Salesforce community, right? Not just Einstein, but um, there's always someone to ask and, and people that are willing to give their time to help. So, yeah, that's uh, that's great. So, um, aside from the project, what's been your biggest achievement today as a Salesforce consultant or professional? Yeah, other than other than the uh, the implementation itself, for me, I'm excited that I'm able to inspire other people. So, I mean, I've lived most of my life coaching and training and, and trying to inspire and motivate and help people in their own personal lives. And so other than the career aspect of my Salesforce journey, the fact that I've been able to tell my story, that I've been able to inspire people one-on-one -on -one and through my blog posts, through interviews, uh, through the awesome admin award and all that, that's given me a platform for. To me, that's really exciting that I've, I feel like I've been able to encourage and inspire others as well. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, giving back again, that comes back to the whole ethos of the yeah, Salesforce market. absolutely. But you presented at Dreamforce, so uh, I was I was thinking that would be uh, the number one. So um, <laughs> I was in the crowd there, and um, I know, you, like, that was your first Dreamforce. So uh, to present at Dreamforce at your very first one, that's a, a major achievement. How was that? Uh, it was terrifying before I got up there, but once I was up there, I had a blast. And... Um, it looks like I'll be presenting at World Tour. Okay. So that's exciting as well. Sure. Uh, I guess I have a lot of, you know, a lot of experience in presenting, as yes. it were, and speaking. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's just a very different environment. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And how did that come about, um, the, the whole Dreamforce experience? Because for, for us, um, you've got a brand now, like the, the, the Mark brand is big and, and people must contact you about, you know, the World Tour, um, Down Under Dreaming. Um, all, all of these events that are coming up, people want to hear your story and, and hear you present. So is the brand something that you, you, you went out to create or has that just been part and parcel of, of what you've done over the last kind of few months? Yeah, the story behind that is quite ironic. So because I was hired on a three month contract, I thought to myself, you know what, if this only lasts three months, at the end of three months, I don't really have many contacts. I'm going to need to get another job. And I really I'm really passionate and I'm very ambitious sure. and I really have wanted to excel and to grow in the journey. So I thought part of that will be getting the right contacts. Yeah. So I thought, well, I enjoy writing. I'm very social. So I decided to get busy and active on LinkedIn and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And and really, it's, that's how the journey began of, of my own personal brand was uh, in order to further my career beyond Infusion360. Now, of course, I didn't know that my journey with Infusion 360 would um, would progress as it has, and that I'd become a, a partner in the new venture. Sure, but that that's how the journey began. Yeah, so, and tell us more about the new venture. So uh, it's kind of just breaking news over the last uh, month or so that, that it's it's now evolving from Infusion 360 into a wider business that you're uh, a business partner of. Um, so what what is the venture and what's the plan and uh, what does the future hold? Sure. So we've found that. Einstein Analytics is, is very powerful and it's transformed our business. So our sales pipeline, and I look back and I'm amazed at this, but our sales pipeline has quadrupled in the last 12 months, which is fantastic growth. Yeah, crazy We've growth. gone from two advisors to four advisors. We're growing our service team. We're employing offshore resources. We're redoing our offices. We're even looking to expand in that sense. And uh, as we've looked at the systems that we've built, um, both with Salesforce, but particularly the Einstein Analytics, we've realized that what we've built can help others. So we've invested hundreds and hundreds of our, our hours in building these dashboards for the financial services industry. We also are, are very acquainted with the healthcare industry because our other business owns medical centers and runs them. Sure. And we have about 400 doctors who are clients. So we decided that we would build out analytics packages for financial services and healthcare. Mm -hmm that we would um, release those and implement them for clients, build our analytics for them, offer ongoing um, support and help and consulting. And, and we really believe that what we have will transform businesses if they embrace it and if they embrace the culture changes that come along with uh, running a business from analytics rather than meetings and emails and spreadsheets, sure. et cetera. So that's, I never expected to be a CIO I never expected to be a business partner, yeah. um, but you know I had a lot, lot of options as this project was not not finished, but nearing the end of phase one or, or at the end of phase one. There were opportunities with consultancies. There were opportunities with 
other people that have contacted me about working for them. But when my, uh, my friend, Neil, and now business partner came to me, we felt that, you know, this was a great opportunity. And uh, it's, it's really a niche market. There aren't any analytics. There are no consultancies out there that have that speciality sure. that I'm aware of. Yeah. Uh, and Salesforce themselves are very excited about it. And they're, we're put going through the um, partnership application process right now. Brilliant. And um, so I, I guess there's lots of people out there that want to go on a similar journey to yourself. Um, they might be looking to break into the Salesforce market and they might be looking to create a bigger brand for themselves so that when, when their current role does finish, they're getting lots, lots of opportunities like you had. Um, what advice would you give to people that you know, are at the start of that journey or, or are looking to, to change the way in which they interact with the community? How, how do people go on a similar journey to, to the one that you have? I think, first of all, you have to have that ambition. You have to have that drive. I don't think anyone succeeds at anything without passion. So I'm a big motorsport fan, particularly Formula One. Sure. And someone like Lewis Hamilton. And I look at him and the fact that he's achieved so much, but he's still very driven and very passionate. And that's why he continues to yeah. succeed. The journey goes on. Hey, yeah, exactly. So you've got to have that. Without that, you'll, you'll really never get anywhere. But if you have that drive and that ambition, then you need to be passionate also about learning not only through Trailhead, but also through a network that you create with people in the Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, I'd encourage people to get to every event they can because every event that I've gone to, I've met someone that's impacted my journey. Uh, and I would also encourage people, probably the biggest thing would be to do something that you're afraid of doing. Like I'm excited but yet terrified about this new business. Sure. Uh, but I'm jumping into it. Yeah. And I think people that... that just stay within their comfort zone and do what they're comfortable doing and they know they can do, I, I don't think that they'll ever really grow. Yeah, for sure. And uh, another thing you're giving back um, through is the, the Bella Vista user group. Um, so you, you run those monthly, is it quarterly? Uh, I think about every two months. Okay. Yeah. And um, and what kind of people are you having coming through there and uh, and, and what I guess that's giving back and, um, and, and giving back to that community that can't necessarily get in here. So who, who should come along to the Bella Vista user group? Yeah, so we're out in the northwestern suburbs, not far from Castle Hill, out near Kellyville, and we found that there's a lot of Salesforce users out in the west like we are, that it's just not really practical to get off work early, travel into the city, go to the user groups, which I had done a couple of times. So Ripon Barua and I had the idea of starting off a user group in the western suburbs. The response has been amazing. I think we had about 20 people at our recent second event and... Uh, we had some great sessions. There was a, a great camaraderie. People stayed around afterward and, and um, you know, networked and, and chatted and got to know each other. And um, I've had a lot of positive feedback about it and we're excited about the future of that as well. Great. Um, and one thing that we're passionate about at Talent Hub is, um, is bringing new people into the community. So um, we've, uh, we've started up a, a monthly event called Trailhead Tuesday. Um, we're, we're running them in Sydney and hoping to set one up in Melbourne. Um, but we've noticed your son, uh, I think it's Adam, is uh, is often picking up some trailhead <laughs> badges alongside you at the weekends. And um, do you do you feel that trailhead is a good tool for, for kids? And, and should more people be encouraged? More kids be encouraged to use it? Um, in your opinion? Yeah, my son's had a blast with trailhead, uh, and I found with with him it suits his style of learning. So my son doesn't do terribly well in a very structured group learning environment. Uh, he gets very fidgety, he, he has autism, so he has some unique challenges. Sure. Whereas I found that in the, the personal learning space, when it's him and the computer, when the, the um, trail is guiding him through the modules, and uh, he does really well. Now he needs, I found he needs assistance when it comes to the badges that need you to build things, yeah. obviously, because he's only 11. Sure. But um, yeah, he's really enjoyed it. and. Uh, you never know, he might be my next intern in a few years. The next trailblazer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's great to see, and uh, we, we're wanting more people to come into the market. So if you can start them young, or yeah. even better. Hey? That's probably one thing I would recommend, just on the previous point. A lot of people have asked me, how did you get that job? How did you start off on the journey? You know, really my story is so unique. There's almost no one out there that's going to hire someone like me that doesn't know the system to implement it. Sure. So I, I don't think people should expect that. Yeah. Agreed. But I, I think that one avenue that people can take is either a not-for-profit role or there are some places where they could do um, an internship. So um, 
I would encourage people to consider that. And you're you're mentoring someone. Um, so how did they? Because lots of people want a mentor, they don't know how to ask. And um, was that your idea, or did uh, did did? Actually, it happened through a common friend. So a friend of mine had a guy my age. He's forty nine, very strong IT and business background, but no experience with Salesforce. And so he he uh, my friend brought him and I together for lunch. The three of us had lunch, talked about my journey, and uh, this guy Arun was very interested. And so I got him onto Trailhead. And really, I was just seeing how he did with Childhead to see how serious he was. Sure. Well, he got 100 badges in two months. Pretty serious. So he's serious. obviously pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then he got certified. Okay. And, um, and passed first time, which so obviously has an aptitude for the system. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and then I was encouraging him to, to go somewhere where he could learn and grow. And then I realized that I'd be moving into the new business and I needed someone to take over my current role as the, the admin and the business analyst. And if used in 360. Sure. So we brought him on, and um, he'll be working for the new business with Infusion 360 as a, a customer as of early this coming year. And um, he's doing great. He's learning Pardot now. He's getting very competent just in the in in our org, and he's also on wanting to learn Einstein too. Okay. And what's the new business called? Visioneer 360. Great. Well, thanks a lot for your time, Mark. Uh, we look forward to seeing how Visioneer 360 grows uh, coming into 2018. And uh, we'll add all of the details with your uh, social profiles and the new company details on, on the video. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.